What's going on YouTube? So today I'm going to be making a video about happiness and what that has to do with God. And basically, I think we can get that God is the one that's going to make us completely happy. We always go for other outside sources. We look for it in money, for a job, for another person, and all these things we always end up finding ourselves empty and you gotta ask well why is that we always think oh well if I get this then I'll be happy but really the reality is we're just using all of these things to fill our heart for God so that's why we just be keep on becoming empty and God has created our souls to have a longing for him and whenever we try to fill it with that opposite, we get the opposite effect. We get emptiness. But the way that we can actually be filled with Him and actually be truly happy is by looking to heaven. And the way we actually can look to heaven is just by understanding that everything in this life is just temporal and that nothing in this life really even matters. I mean, of course it matters, but the thing that matters most is that we love one another. And that's Jesus' greatest commandment. He says, you are my disciples if you love one another. So if we have our main desire to love other people, then that's when we will have our fill because God is in us doing the work. And we're able to have the joy that Christ had when he was on this earth. Though he was faced with all the things that we might completely despise, like, of course, having to endure the cross most of all, he was still filled with the most joy. And so that's obviously trying to say something that holiness equals happiness. And what I mean by being holy is not just by saying, oh, well, I keep the commandments and I do all this, so why am I not happy? And it doesn't have anything to do with that, but it has to do with an accordance of, are you willing to love other people when you don't want to love them? And that's when your faith is truly tested. And that's when you will find that you will be able to have true happiness. And it says that in Romans 14, um, verse 17, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So what this is saying basically is that we can't, the kingdom of God, it says, is within us. So if we're looking for it on the outside in this external world, then you're going to find nothing really. So we have to always be looking inwardly towards what God has been gifted to us and figure out how we can always constantly be giving to one another. And whenever you think of giving, you think, well, yeah, I'll give some money to the church or I'll give um, some gift to my friend or my family. But really, you have to be aware of giving in every single part of you. It says, Jesus says, if any man will follow me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross daily, and follow me. And honestly, that can be really scary at times because that means we're not in control of our lives. And the thing is, the less control we have, the more happiness that we'll find. And the reason for that is, is because you're like a child. Whenever you're a child, you really don't have control of certain outcomes. You have to you have to be completely dependent on your parents or some type of guardian or a guardian angel even. I mean, hey, angels are real. So just remember that. Um, but what I was saying is is that we have to be dependent and reliable on God alone is what it's saying. It, it, it says in the Psalms that even God hath brought me out of the womb, who brought me to my mother's breast. 
It's God who does all these things and makes this happen. It is the person that is making it happen, but it's by God's grace that He is allowing this to happen and that you're just allowed to be able to experience the things of life. And another reason we can often become unhappy is because we're not satisfied with what we've been given, are grateful. And we have to be grateful for everything that we've been given because this life is the gift and there's nothing else greater that we could ever have. It says that in Ecclesiastes that the righteous can often receive the reward that you would expect the wicked to receive. And that just goes to show that life isn't fair and that it's not dependent on your ability to do something for the most part. It's God working in through certain people to accomplish His purpose. And we have to realize, are we being a part of God's purpose or are we not? And the reason, the way we can be a part of God's purpose is by focusing on loving other people and by not being selfish because our unhappiness is ultimately just produced from our own sorrows. And we want to be happy. Everyone wants to be happy in love. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, what is your main desire in life? Yeah, of course you want to have some money. Of course you want to get married. Of course you want to have kids. But if you have all those things, you can still be unhappy. So you have to find true happiness in God. And the only way you can do that is by knowing that God is the one that has your back and other people don't. I mean, of course, the people who you're closest to have your best interests, but there's certain things that other people can't do that only God can. And people, we're human, so it's like we're going to sin against other people. And that's where we really have to find our love from Christ. Because if we aren't finding our love from Christ, then our relationships will begin to deteriorate and we won't be able to have happiness within those blessings that God has given to us. So we have to completely let go and just flow with the wind. Because, I mean, if you're not flowing with the wind, then you're going against it. And it says, He who is not with me is against me and he who puts his back to the plow is not fit for the kingdom of God so we must have to be present right now and let go of all the things which easily beset us which is the sin so continue to pursue God and wait upon his name and it says you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with your whole heart you will come to pray to me and I will listen to you and right before that, it goes on to say, I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and an expected end. So if we continue to pursue God and His righteousness and His kingdom and not be so concerned with what we need to be doing or what we think we need to be doing, then God will be there to lead us in the right direction. So only be focused and concerned on what God is telling you to do and you'll find your joy in doing His will. So, basically just love, live life, because you only got one. So, don't mess it up. Don't have any regrets that you would at the end of your deathbed. And just do it. That's, you know, Nike right there. I mean, I'm not trying to take the slogan, but I know it's trademark, so. But that's all I got to say, guys. Continue to just understand that God has you in His hand and that He's never going to let you go no matter how far you try to go from Him because it says that He who began a good work in you shall finish it until the day of Christ Jesus. So with that in mind, please be sure to like this video, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think if you want to see anything else what other topics you might want to hear about. I'm here to tell you about fitness, about God, about food, and about life. So with that in mind, you guys stay blessed and have a 
hopeful future.